Welcome to the land of unpopular opinions. For my first video, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the best books I have ever read, aka my favorite books of all time, because I thought it was sort of appropriate for my first video to be a general review of my tastes and what I like, what kind of book opinion I generally have, so that you can see if you agree or if you would like to hear more of my opinions. So without any further ado, let's jump in. Now, I already recorded this video before, but I didn't like it, and I read another book since that obviously needs to make it to the list, so I'm just doing it again. But this time it's not going to be in any particular order because I feel like it's more fun that way instead of just going like, oh, I read this as a kid, I don't remember it that much, so here's my opinion. No, we're just going to go in the order that I put them here next to me. So the first one that we have is I think one that's a little bit obvious if you paid any attention to my channel title name, channel, channel name, and that would be Wheel of Time. I'm grunting because these are so difficult to hold up because they're really heavy. But these are the Orbit hardcovers, in case anyone cares, they are gorgeous and I adore them. But Wheel of Time is one of my favorite books of all time, series. I call it a book because, I mean, it's a 14 part book if you get, if you understand what I want to say. I, I have no words to describe how much I love these books. The characters, the world, the complexity of the magic system. This was my first real adult read. I'm not even done with it yet. I've been reading it for like two years, which we will ignore. But... <sighs> yes, this was very articulate, but... <laughs> my favorite character of all time has to be Randall Thor. His development, his personality, his overall role in the story and his magic it's incredible all the other guys obviously I love them I love them to bits <laughs> they all have insane wives but I guess that's something they also had to go through Matt's Matt's wife wow but <laughs> the magic system is something I've never read it before it's incredible obviously it's based on Tolkien but it's nothing like Tolkien it just has some similar character roles in the first book but it's nothing like Tolkien if you've ever heard that before but the favorite women in this series are Moraine and Nynaeve I would die for them and I recently read New Spring which is basically a prequel about Moraine <sighs> and my god it was so good just just read this series immediately before the show comes out because then you'll have a very different view of what the story is about so please read these before the show comes out, or if you're not planning to watch the show, obviously read these whenever, but still I would really recommend that you read them because there's so much you can get into. You will have so many books to go through before you're done with this, and I don't even want to contemplate being done with these books. You will not want to leave this world if you get in. So I would recommend this to literally anyone who claims to be a fan of fantasy, read it. Please read it, and I will also actually suggest a way that you can read it to avoid the slog, which is what I did, and it's it helped so much. It's incredible. I love everything about this, literally everything. It has its flaws, little slow parts where you're like, uh, okay, I didn't need <laughs> the last 40 pages about them walking, but that's very not even significant considering how long the series is, so please, please read. Now the next one that I will be talking about is one that came as a surprise to me because I wasn't a fan of anime. I'm still not, if we're going to be realistic. I didn't like manga, I'd never read manga, I wasn't interested in reading manga, and that would be Death Note. I adored Death Note <laughs> the first time I watched the anime. I was like, it's very popular, let me at least see what it's about, then I can decide if I like the genre. I, I rewatched it immediately after I finished watching it. It was that good. I remember it. some time passed before I rewatched it again. I was like, okay, uh, enough. I need to get the manga. So I got the manga. I loved it so much. I read it twice already. I will read it again. I will rewatch the anime. I love this story so much. These characters are so dear to me. I love Light. I love L. I love all. I love the Shinigami. That's like, that shit is 
fucking interesting and I love it. I lost my thought there for a minute because I was just so, so into remembering the story. That's besides the point. Anyway, this is the all-in-one edition because I'm way too cheap to buy the separate ones. No matter how pretty they are because that is expensive. Where I live, at least, to get the separate six ones. So I bought the all-in-one edition. And it's so pretty. It's like glossy and silver. And when you turn it, there's like ryuk. And look, look how thick it is. It is 2,400 pages. So it's a little bit bulky and you're not going to carry it around with you. But if you want to invest in this, if you love it, I definitely recommend it. It is gorgeous. It has the extra chapters in the end. Chapter. This definitely also has like a slumpy bit where you're kind of bored. But I love these characters so much that I actually have no problem getting through it. You just flip, a, flip through it a little bit faster. But... I love the overall story, I love the character arcs, I love the god elements, the intelligence of this. It's basically like reading about Sherlock and Moriarty from the perspective of Moriarty. And that's kind of, that's a weird comparison, but I love BBC Sherlock, by the way, so that's why I'm making this comparison. Because you love both of them so much and you can see why each of them is kind of wrong, because they're on opposite ends of the spectrum but this is this is incredible I love it so much read it maybe not if you want female representation because there isn't much of that and the females are mostly abused in this but that's besides the point because it's not about them in this one so I love the story I would I would honestly reread it like immediately if I didn't have others the next two are books that I read a long time ago when I say a long time ago, I don't even remember when I read one of these and I read one of, I read the other one like six years ago, maybe seven, a lot, a long time ago, but I know they would be favorites if I reread them now. I just don't remember the synopsis as well as I should. So I will leave the links to these two down below, but I would still recommend them even with the little memory that I have. And they are Momo and Jonathan Livingston Seagull by Richard Bach and Michael Ende, Michael Ende, I have no idea how to pronounce that. I know it's German. This one is Bach and it's English and this one is German. I, <laughs> Me and names do not have a good relationship. But anyway, these two are amazing. They're one of those that have, a, they're short, but they have a message that is important to you when you're a kid and is also important to you when you're an adult. And I love them. I love them then. I would love them now. I will reread them this year. This one... I will leave the synopsis because I can't sum it up for you. It's about a little girl and there's gray men who basically take, take out the happiness out of the world. And then we have Jonathan Livingston Seagull, which is a metaphor. I don't remember for what, but I remember that it was amazing. So this will be very vague. I apologize. But honestly, for this one, I didn't know what it was about. I was like, oh, it's a seagull. Sure, because I read it for school. But it was incredible, so I don't even want to tell you what this is about. I want you to go into it because it is amazing. I have no other words for it. This one has illustrations and it's very short. So if you can find it in your library or whatever, maybe in your library even. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Obviously, this is not in English, but you would read it in English. But find the one with illustrations because it's pretty cool. But please read it. I will also read it. Maybe when I read it, you can wait until I reread it and we can read it together, but it is incredible. We have finally reached the books that made this re-record a thing, and that would be Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I am obviously wearing right now my one ring so I can represent Sauron. Sauron, I'm, I'm pronouncing this in my own language, I'm sorry. But these books, I read them recently because I'm an embarrassment. <laughs> I read Lord of the Rings for the first time when I was 19. But these books, <laughs> in case you haven't read them and you love fantasy, please read them because they're nothing like that movie, which we will not mention. But uh, this was incredible. I read these, I had like a Tolkienathon when around my birthday last week. I read all three of these and the Hobbit graphic novel and one weekend. I destroyed the spines. But I loved them so much. They're nothing like the movie. They are incredible. Every character is 
so dear to me. The There's humor, there's magic, there's myth, there's... Tolkien's world is n like nothing else. You can basically walk in there and you could never leave. I had a difficulty letting go of it. For like five days after it, I couldn't think about anything else. Like literally nothing else. I still have to read The Silmarillion. It's on my nightstand. But I can't, couldn't read anything or watch anything that didn't have anything to do with Middle Earth for a week. And if that doesn't tell you how good it is, then I don't know what will. This one is the longest which is weird because I thought it would be the third one. Obviously this is all one book, so I'm just talking nonsense, but this was everything. I will reread it probably every year for the rest of my life. I, I, I have no words for it. It's incredible. And obviously if you're like me, a fantasy lover who hasn't read Tolkien until they were almost 20, please read it because you will not be disappointed. Now the next series is one that's probably the most complicated on this list because I didn't like all the books at all actually. I kind of hated the last one. That would be The Witcher. I also read these I think during January, a little bit of December and maybe finished in February. Yeah, for, I didn't even read Season of Storms yet because I was very upset at Lady of the Lake. But I'm holding up these because they're the best <laughs> of the series. And Last Wish, but that's currently at a friend's house and I can't get it because quarantine. But this series was incredible in that I thought it was one of the best books that I've ever read when I picked it up. And it is. The best written. It has Slavic humor and I'm Slavic, so I really appreciated that. It's hilarious. The characters, he has the ability to make you fall in love with the characters within like three sentences. And you would die for them. He was incredible and I adored him, but then he sort of, he's humorous and hilarious but also serious and he has in this one especially he has excellent like lessons and messages about life but then he suddenly wants you to take him seriously and you do and then he makes a joke of the resolution of the plot in the fifth book and I was very confused like if you don't want me to take this seriously and you just want me to be along for the ride which I also really wanted then why did you turn it into a serious story and then made me angry at you when I finished reading it. But these will forever be my favorites. I will probably reread the series and look at it differently with not a serious and critical opinion, mind, mindset, but <laughs> why, why did you do that to me? Like, let me know from the beginning how you want me to view your series. Because Lady of the Lake was dreadful. Not all of it, obviously, but the resolution of all the characters was pretty much, like, abysmal. But also, Time of Contempt, I did not enjoy. I don't remember why now, but I did not enjoy that one. But these, these were god tier. This is definitely my favorite of the series. I would suggest you read The Witcher, but don't take it seriously. Don't take it as someone who was a master of fantasy and wanted to finish the series. I, I have a theory that he just wanted to write about Geralt traveling. I didn't want a plot, but someone made him put the plot there. <laughs> read The Witcher. Don't read Lady of the Lake critically because that will not be good for you. The next one is also a little obvious, like the Wheel of Time one, which is obviously Star Wars. You wouldn't think I would put Star Wars under my favorite books of all time, but I will. And I don't care what you say because they're the best books that I've ever read. I love Star Wars. Star Wars is a big part of my life. I have posters everywhere. I've loved it ever since I can remember. I cried to Revenge of the Sith like the first four times that I watched it as a kid because I was one of the prequel kids. They are by far my favorites. I adore them. I love everything about Star Wars except for the sequels. We will ignore that right now. Disney Star Wars is not a thing. But the prequels were god tier. I adored them. And then we have the prequel books which are these. I obviously every single Star Wars book that I've read so far has been five stars. So make of that what you will. But these are the prequel books and they're incredible. If you don't like the prequels, read the books because they will make you love the prequels because I already loved them and now I, I, th these killed me because you get extra layers of emotion, you get extra character development, you get scenes, you get intricacies that don't fit into the movie. I literally have no words for these but this, this book destroyed my life. I, I hate it, but I love it at the same time. 
Matthew Stover can write. He can write. <laughs> this book is everything. It's definitely one of my favorite books of all time, regardless of the movies. I, if you, like, removed this part out of it, it would still be an incredible book. So I would definitely recommend that you read it, even if you're not a fan of... I, you kind of have to be a fan of Star Wars. I can't say oh, you don't have to be a fan of Star Wars to like them, but you you kind of do. But you don't have to be a fan of the prequels to love them because they're incredible. They're almost not like the movies, but also they sort of make a beautiful unified whole with the movies. And I, I adore them. I'm going to reread them soon because I read this like two years ago. And I'm ready for the tears. I'm, I'm ready. This is going to destroy me. Notice you can see the stack of books over here. Who cares? I already talked about those. Anyway, the next series is one that's a classic on BookTube. That's a classic on pretty much everyone. On everyone's list of people who make fantasy favorites. And that's Harry Potter. These are obviously the beautiful Slytherin editions. I picked up just these two because Gobble of Fire was a bit difficult to get out of its position on the shelf. But... This series, it's always been a favorite. I was scared it wasn't going to be because I reread it after like six years, I want to say. I was in a long reading slump. And I was scared I wasn't going to like them when I was older. But the first three books were, I think, three stars, actually. I think books one and two were like 2.5 even. This one was three. But then we got to book four and that was five stars. And all the others were five stars. It's not a flawless series. It has so many plot holes if you want to think about it. But this is a character-based series. If you like the characters, you will love everything about this. The first three books are weak because they're basically for children. Completely. I couldn't get past the plot conveniences in the first three because they were very, very, very jarring. But then she flipped a switch and suddenly book four and onwards were so long and character-focused and you feel like you're at Hogwarts with them. You ignore everything that doesn't make sense. Like, I had nothing to say about books four to seven because I love the character interactions and personalities so much. I didn't want to nitpick, not even a little bit. Harry is definitely my favorite character, like one of the favorite characters of all time. I adore him, but... And the Weasley twins. I don't like them in the movies, but in, in the books, in the books, they can just stomp on me and I will thank them probably. But these are gorgeous editions. It's such a shame that the first three books suck. But I want to go to Hogwarts. This makes my childhood. And I was scared nostalgia would be the only thing pulling me back to them. But they're genuinely good. They are genuinely good. If you get past the th first three, you are in for a ride. And these are amazing. Now, the next one. Oh my god, why is the lighting so dark all of a sudden? The next one is going to be something that I read in December. So... We're getting to the recent one. Oh, actually, this is not the most recent one. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're rolling with it. Now, the next one is a book that was everything. I was surprised at how much I loved it because I was putting off reading it for like six or seven months. And that would be The Last Name Sara. Yes, these are two editions of the same one. It's not like part one and part two. These are both the first book. Although, all the three books in the trilogy are technically standalone, so not... Anyway, <laughs> The Last Name Sara is basically a book, basically a young adult fantasy that is how to train your dragon. That is my pitch for this, because that is the vibe I got from it. You have dragons, you have someone who kills and hates dragons that needs to have a transformation and ends up loving them and has a dragon that is very similar to Toothless. I'm not going to spoil what dragon, obviously. The romance was amazing, which I didn't expect because I hate romance in young adult, 90% of the time. The characters were amazing. It was 400 pages, and you wouldn't think I would like a story that ends in 400 pages. It was incredible. I listened to the audiobook. You should listen to the audiobook if that's your forte. I don't listen to audiobooks, but I'm so glad I did this one because the voice was so soothing and amazing and the woman was incredible. She made me cry when she read out loud this one sentence. Like, I just burst into tears. It was 3 a.m. And it was so good that I actually just sat down and listened to it, which I wouldn't usually do. But I have to reread this, these physical editions. My mom read the paperback. My dad read the hardcover because I ordered the hardcover after I realized that I adored it. I had this one 
for like seven months. But I have to actually read the physical one because I want to annotate. I want to tab this entire thing up. I, I, I love this book so much. I'm going to consider reading the other ones. I know they're less dragon-centered and not about Asha anymore, who's the main character in this one, and I adore her. So I wasn't very interested in the other books, but let me know if they're good. I will read them eventually. And I only bought the hardcover because I like to have hardcovers only for books that I adore. Because I don't... I have to order hardcovers. You never have hardcovers where I live. So I especially ordered this. So glad I did. I have to annotate it. I love it so much. I will reread it. I would recommend it to anyone who's a fan of dragons, fantasy, even romance. Because I could recommend this romance. But dragons. Especially the dragon part. If you like How to Train Your Dragon... This will be the shit for you. I adored it. Now this next one is going to be a very controversial one, but not an unpopular one. I mean, series, a very unpopular opinion. That will be the Grisha Trilogy. These books are on no one's favorites list, and I can't pretend I understand it. I'm not even going to. But these books are everything. I read them. They were up the second books that I actually read after my very long slump, but that has no meaning on it because I reread it recently and they are still favorites. I, I love them with all my heart, all the characters, not, not all of them. I actually hate Nikolai, which is the only saving grace of this series for most people, but I couldn't stand him. Anywho, this trilogy, I, I read book one and then I read these two in like a day. I remember reading it all day long and I finished Ruin and Rising at like 8 a.m. <laughs> the next day and my pillow was f wet because of tears. I have no idea how I went to sleep that day but this series is very strange because it's young adult and it's very short because it has like 300 pages each. It's short, shorter than one Jordan book. And I, I adored them. <laughs> they had an amazing ending. The plot was interesting. The world was beautiful. The characters were amazing. The powers were everything. The romances were, ah, incredible. And I knew she would end up with Mal from the first book. How did you not get that? <laughs> I knew she would be with Mal from the beginning, but I still loved her in The Darkling. The Darkling was by far my favorite character and I enjoyed every single part of that. I liked her and Mal. I liked Mal's development. I loved I loved I loved it. <laughs> I have nothing else to say about this. Ruin and Rising was actually my favorite book in the trilogy. A perfect ending, an amazing conclusion. It was incredible. The plot was also really really good for book 3. I liked every single page of Ruin and Rising. I did not want to put it down either of the times that I read it. I loved it that much. It was incredible. Book one was fine. Actually, upon reread, it was my least favorite. Like 4.5 stars. I mean, these have to be five stars. But they were. This one was the lowest. Siege and Storm would have been incredible if not for Nikolai. I can't stand him. But it was still incredible. The plot was amazing. And Heron and Rising were just five stars all around. I loved everything about it. I have no complaints about this series, literally none. I have no idea why everyone hates on it so much. Why people give Mal such a hard time. I can't wait for the series. Ben Barnes is the Darkling, <laughs> excuse me. Do you want me to die? Because if yes, I respect it. I very much respect it. Lee Bardugo, this was your beginning series, your opening into the book world and wow, you went in with a bang. And yes, no, there will be no Six of Crows on this list because in this house we do not stand that book. The writing in that was a lot better, but the writing has absolutely no impact on how much I like a series. So this was God tier. Six of Crows can go and check. This is the last one, but not the least by any stretch of the imagination because this is one of my favorite fucking series of all time. I would die for these books. To remain in existence like if someone told me tomorrow you either die or these books have to be erased i would die because 
the Winter Night trilogy is in incredible. I have no words. Spectacular, brilliant, the Lady Gaga meme. It. I read it like in February and then in March. I read the first book not expecting much because my mom didn't like the beginning and she didn't have to do it immediately. But truth be told, we have very different tastes. But then I read it. I couldn't stop reading it. I was in love so much that the next day I read The Girl in the Tower on ebook, which I never do, ever. I hate reading on ebook. But then I couldn't get book three for like three weeks, <laughs> maybe a bit less, but it felt like a million years because there was no ebook and it wasn't in stores. So I just ordered it from my local bookstore and it was supposed to come before the 20th of March. It came on the 17th, just before quarantine. And I'm so happy that I actually have this in my hands because if I, someone just walked past and I'm comfortable enough with a camera, but not comfortable enough with other people listening to me. I'm so happy that this was actually in my hands for quarantine because I would have died. Fuck. I was being interrupted. I am so sorry about that. Anyway, I'm so happy I got this before quarantine. I would have died physically, mentally, whatever you want to, whatever. I would have died if I wasn't able to finish this and it was everything. The best conclusion of all time, the best story of all time, the best payoff of all time, the best characters of all time. These books were it for me. It was Russian, Russian inspired, so there's a lot of words that I can actually read in my own language. I'm not Russian, but we have the Slavic languages are pretty much the same. And I can read all the words in my own accent, my natural accent and language. And I appreciated it so much. It was beautiful to just like go through the book and say Pojar or Morosko or I what else? I can't remember Solovey, which basically is Slavoj in my own language, which means Nightingale. Obviously there's more, but I am blanking right now. I will reread these like very soon, even though I finished them <laughs> not even a month ago. I want to annotate them. I want to cherish them and love them until the end of time because they were incredible. The atmosphere was beautiful. The writing is next level. Story is interesting. Like, you're sort of annoyed by the aunt, by the sexist parts in the first book, but <laughs> she makes you really, really thank her for how she fixed that. And there was this thing she did at the beginning of book three, I'm not spoiling anything, that I was very upset by because I thought she would be like all the other authors who are like, oh, I'm different, I don't like happy endings, let's just you know, do this and wrench your heart out. So fuck you as a reader, I guess. But in the end, <laughs> in the end, she did something. I've never cried at a book from joy. I was so full of emotion at the ending of book three that when she did this thing, I cried. I cried for like five minutes because I was so happy that this had a happy ending. Not a lot of books these days happy endings, and they need to because books are escapism. I don't want to be tortured by a book considering I'm currently in the middle of a pandemic and I had an earthquake in my own country where you never have earthquakes last month. I want escapism. I don't want misery. So this is feel good. It's incredible. The romance is, oh, this is how you write romance. Read this if you want to feel good, if you want to be immersed, if you want to appreciate other cultures because it's very good. Representing Slavic cultures, I can confirm that. It was so cool seeing all the words. I, yeah, there was Zima also. I just remembered the word. And there's a lot of, obviously, a lot of other stuff. But this was Medved. Medved is in my language. This was incredible. Please read it. I am going to shout this over the rooftops because a lot of people haven't read it. A lot of people don't give it enough credit. This needs to be raved about more than any other young adult book, in my opinion, and please read it because it's that 